Hey everyone, Jedi here, and welcome to my first tech tip tutorial video. I'm gonna try to keep these short and sweet, but still provide enough context and um, information around the tools that we'll be discussing. So yeah, let's get started. Today, we're gonna be talking a little bit about sudo and do as, and why you should potentially consider switching over to do as rather than sudo. So if you are familiar with Linux at all, sudo is the typical standard way of um, executing any program as root or executing a program with escalated privileges on your system. Um, sudo is short for super user do, which I think is a pretty solid explanation of what it is. And um, yeah, what most people who use sudo on a day-to-day -day basis might actually not know though, is that sudo actually has a lot of options and features that are almost never used. I've probably actually never used any of these flags here before. Um, but with that comes a lot of added uh, functionality and attack surface for potential security exploits. And we saw that last year in January 2021 um, with CVE 2021-3156, which was a heap-based buffer overflow which allowed privilege escalation to root, um, which is a fancy way of saying uh, the program got exploited so someone could gain uh, all powerful access on your system, which is definitely not what you want to hear out of a program that is used pretty much day to day on most Unix like machines. So, just to give a comparison of sudo and do as, which is the potential replacement that you'll be that we'll be looking at in today's video, um, I've gone ahead and copied down the source code from both the do as repository and sudo mirror on GitHub and removed all the um, all the Git folders from. Uh, all the Git folders from both of them to give like a kind of size comparison of the two. And if we just do a quick uh, comparison using disk usage dash sh do as and sudo, you'll see that do as comes in at a mere 560 kilobytes and sudo comes in at 20 megabytes. And that's not to say that um, larger software is strictly worse, but personally out of software that I want um, to basically just use minimally to run things as root. I would prefer to have less source code because it reduces the attack surface for how a potential hacker could exploit my system. And if you know running a command, just doing do as or sudo whatever command is all the functionality that I need from it, I'd want something that only does that and that one thing well rather than you know sudo which can do a million other things as well. So that's kind of my motivation behind making this video and giving this quick overview of do as. And um, yeah, so with that said, let's get into a little bit more about do as. So do as kind of like sudo stands for super user do, do as stands for uh, dedicated open BSD application sub executor, which is extremely intuitive, right? Um, but it was developed by Ted Unangst for OpenBSD, which is absolutely based if you're not familiar with any of the BSDs or OpenBSD, OpenBSD in particular. OpenBSD is very secure and um, probably, and has that kind of reputation in the uh, Unix-like OS's community. I'm not sure what the right word for that is, but yeah, it's developed as a simpler and safer pseudo replacement, which we kind of saw before with the, uh, the disk usage example, which is very rudimentary and it shouldn't be taken scientifically, but um, I guess it kind of conveys the idea across. So, while Duaz is originally a OpenBSD utility, there has been ports of it for many, many other systems, specifically the uh, Slicer 69 Duaz port, uh, ports OpenBSD's Duaz to FreeBSD, Linux, et cetera, et cetera. So um, we're just gonna run through a quick install and setup of Duaz, and uh, yeah, let's get into it. So depending on what operating system you're on, you might already have a pre-configured or pre-compiled package you can just install. But in my case, I am on Windows subsystem for Linux and running Ubuntu. So I will be using this instruction here. So first, uh, you want to make sure that you have clone this repository. You're just going to do that with a, uh, I'll just show you real quick. Uh, so I'll remove everything in this directory, hit clone the repo that I need. And that was really fast. Go into do as, see all the files, and make sure that we have. Um, all the dependencies that we need to install the program first. So quick note right here, you can see that we're actually using sudo or sudo to actually install the dependencies first. If you don't have sudo installed or you don't want to use it to install do as, uh, you can always just switch to root and install all this stuff, which may or may not be good security practice. I'm not sure. Anyways, so make sure that we have all those dependencies installed before we try to make it. So, or sorry, build the binary. 
And then once that's in order, we can run make, which will make the files. We make install to install the files. And then you'll realize that I forgot to run that with escalator permissions. So currently without do as installed, we're stuck using sudo. So we're going to do that sudo make install, or you could do sudo bang bang, which in most shells will run the last command. So it is now installed. You can check to see that do as installed, do as is installed. Uh, with just running the command. And lastly, we want to do a make clean just to get rid of some of those extra files we don't need anymore. So if we right off the bat, uh, just run do as echo hello from do as and type in our root password, it works. But it's important to note that in depending on how you installed it or on first install, it probably won't work this way. Do as requires a configuration file just like sudo does. But if you're not used to installing these programs, you probably never touch the uh, the sudoers file. So I'll just go in ahead. I'll go ahead and give a quick uh, run through of how to quickly configure do as. So with do as, our configuration file is actually located in Etsy. Sorry, not normal Etsy, but user local Etsy is where our do as configuration file is going to be. So I'm going to go ahead and sudo nvim that file. And you'll see that I already have some configuration right here. And um, it says permit Jedi, which I think is very, very uh, simple, simple uh, syntax. But similarly, you can permit wheel group or however you have your user set up in your account. Currently, I have just my, my personal user in this file. And that's all I need because I'm the only one really using the system. So with that installed or with that configured, um, we can write quit. I do want to point out real quick that if you need additional configuration for do as, you can check out doas.conf, man doas.conf, and then read the docs here. And you'll find that the syntax, again, is very simple. Do permit deny with options and the identity, either the user or the group, and then a bunch of other stuff. Um, so definitely recommend reading this manual. There are some differences between OpenBSD's doas and the portable version. Uh, most notably, the persist option is only available on OpenBSD, not Linux or FreeBSD. Um, so if you by chance happen to open, like, let's say the open BSD manual, it's not the exact same. So just make sure you read the manual and, um, you know, just be aware of some of those little gotchas that might uh, pop up. So now that do is installed, um, the whole reason, remember why we installed do was to, uh, rely less on sudo. So your first instinct then might just be to say, okay, then how do we uninstall sudo? Well, Stop right there. We probably don't want to install sudo if it's uh, if it came with your system and it's tightly coupled with it, because if you're trying to purge a core utility like sudo in your user space, you're probably going to break a lot of things. So instead of uninstalling it, what we can do instead is just disable sudo. So to disable sudo, we need to edit our sudoers file. And the command for doing that is the sudo, which actually needs to be run as root. So we can do do as the sudo. Um, it's called Visudo because it's opening the sudoers file with a text editor, which VI used to probably be the default for, but nowadays it's nano. Anyways, we can open this file and you'll see our rules for allowing sudoers on these three lines here. Um, all we got to do is comment those out real quick. And then uh, Control X to save, yes, and then hit enter. And that should do it. We can run some tests. tests. And right now I'm Jedi, and if I run... Uh, uh, sudo who am I? It should say root if sudo is enabled. And it says not in the sudoers file, this incident will be reported, which is exactly what we want. We can also check with the root user if we do uh, sudo anything. Uh, not in the sudoers file, great. And finally, we can check to make sure that do as works, echo who am I? And um, if it says root, we know that do as is successfully executing our command as root. So after I type in my password, there we get it. Um, we are currently root while running who am I with the do as command. Cool. So that's kind of a gist of do as and how we install and configure it on our machines. That's going to be it mostly for today's video. I am going to post all these links and resources in the description as well as in this repository that I've created. Um, in the future, if there's any changes or things that I add to the content here or any corrections that anyone might make, you can feel free to make a pull request or I don't know, suggest some edits. But I'll have a kind of markdown version of this video in here if you don't want to reference this whole video and you just want something quick to read. Uh, that'll be available in this repository at Jedi's code slash resources on GitHub. Um, but yeah, that's it for today's video. Thank you so much for watching. And if you liked it, 
um, go ahead and help me out with the algorithm if you feel so inclined. And um, yeah, you can follow me on Twitter for more updates and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks.